That's running long. Let's go. Let's go. What are we? Episode 19, 21 of them bitches, man. I got my boy Sam. James with me. Yeah, it's 19. <laughs> I think so, man. I was wrong last time. I had to said 17. Yeah. Y'all know I can't count. It don't, so. it don't matter. It don't matter. Yeah, we here. Right. We ready. I'm going right into this <laughs> shit. This morning, LeBron James text Kevin Durant, hey, man, you want to come to the Lakers with me, dog? Ooh, what do you think about real? that? That is quite interesting, especially if you couple that with uh, something Durant had recently said about how he's not enamored or he's not just focused on chasing championships, that he plays for personal development. So it's just kind of an interesting statement that Durant had made. But I don't know about that. Texting the rival squad, yo, come kick it with me. He's won. He's full. He's satisfied. Would he dip? He's, he's that type of anomaly type brother who you never really know what he might or might not do. But I, I personally think that that's kind of a reach it's probably a chess move to maybe set something else up you know there's always smoke and mirrors mm -hmm. i don't know the, the true validity of it it may be a piece that's being put into play for an alternate reason but that would be kind of crazy duran and lebron like that's <laughs> man <laughs> I, I just okay and so stephen a reported this this morning i'm sure by the time y'all watch this so and he and he went he was like adamant about his sources he was like of course lebron's camp is denying this but my this is this is my most trusted source that said this happened, and then he also goes, uh, KD is like, well, why the fuck would I do that? You know what I mean? That was yeah. apparently what what the thought of is, and ob obviously this is all hearsay. Um, to me, and it, it, my immediate thought is like, because of the it'd be one, okay. Let's say Kawhi was happily married with Pop in San Antonio. There was no Kawhi drama, right? Kawhi is not available. Paul George, it's 50-50 or whatever. He's leaning towards OKC or that, that ship has sailed. Then I could see, OK, maybe you text KD. Hey, man, just checking. Are you good up there? Like, you know, this is a possibility. Mm -hmm. But for him to do it while Kawhi and Paul George is still a possibility, strong possibilities. And it, again, acting as if this really did happen. That's kind of a that's kind of weak, man. KD just busted your ass two years in a row. I just don't see it quite as the same as one LeBron going to Miami or KD going to Golden State. I guess you could say that it was when when the Warriors beat beat OKC in in seven, and he went okay, okay maybe maybe it. I, mm. I guess if you want to see it. to me, it's just a little different. And here's the biggest difference: LeBron is number one. All right, all this talk about oh da da da, and I know KD is striving for that, but he's the king, right? We 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 put him <laughs> on this pedestal, so therefore uh -huh. you can't do that. Yeah, no, you're right. That's like being the best kid on the the schoolyard, and then suddenly, like, whenever they pick teams, you you just it just doesn't make sense. Like, if you're the dominant cat, you don't ever go ask the other dude what's up. It's almost like being at the club. You've got some women lined up. You've got a little party going, and suddenly you want to be in somebody else's VIP. That's just kind of weird. Like, you should have your own red carpet and everything. I don't know why he's. He, they, it kind of shows that he knows what he might need. He's got to get them off of that team that's, in that, order to have any that's chance. What I, that's what I think. I think it's it's one. I think it's telling that, like, yo, even if Kawhi comes or they, they form a team, he, in the back of his mind, thinks maybe he doesn't have enough. It may not be enough. And mm -hmm. so he wants to dismantle that team. More so than needing Durant, he needs to dismantle the Warriors. Yes, sir. Well, yeah. What do you think about that? Kind of like a sneak move or a smoke and mirrors to where maybe you don't attack the biggest, strongest aspect of a, of a situation, but you just kind of move some compartmental pieces so it folds on itself. I think sometimes that's a strategy you have to use. Poke at the edges and mm -hmm. see if like the streams will unravel. You can't always just go in and full force. What is it that they say? Never attack a strong man at his strongest point. You know what I'm saying? So he's not going to be able to overpower them. So if he can right. spread them out. Get them, <laughs> attack them internally somehow tr and attack them internally, attack them. Because, I mean, we we talked about in the last episode, Duran and the jokes and the slights, and we know how sensitive he is. If he could just get Katie's mind to wander or perhaps get get it, uh, the the perception that Katie would consider it, right? That's all it may take. But uh, yeah, I just thought that news that news broke this morning. I thought that was kind of that was just weird, and I, it, it looks. Like I will. I'll, I'll be honest. I want LA to form a super team. I want this to happen. I think it'll be fun. I, I'm not mm -hmm. like, oh no, I don't want. You know, I, I just think I think it'll be fun, and I think it's going to happen. I really do. Um, the second thing that I wanted to get right into like, yesterday, I tweeted, uh, like, if it's time to go, it's time to send the jet for Clay Thompson, and. 
people were, you know, I think people have caught up by now to what I was talking about. But there's a piece of footage. Clay's doing his China, his annual China Clay thing. And he's in a pickup game and his teammate goes to the rim and someone tabletops him, like runs right in and puts him on his head. Nasty spill. This is like grainy, you know, cell phone footage. And there's like a little bit of a dust up. The guys come come together and, and you, it's about as visibly upset as I've ever seen Clay on a basketball court. And you can see him saying, that's fucked up. Don't do that shit. Right. And uh, what and people are saying, uh, you know, don't overreact. What do you mean? You know, it's fine. It was just a, a hard foul. And my point of view on it is one one of the things that we all love about Clay is he doesn't seem to have like a team. He doesn't have like a crew around him. And he's over in China. And I don't think he has, and that's a positive because he's his own man, but there's the negative side of it is I don't think he has a lot of people that are like, hey, Clay, that's probably not a good idea, right? I think Clay kind of does what he wants. And I don't know, you know, I, I just, at, at this point in his career right now, I don't want him over there anyway. I understand it's part of his Anta deal, but I'm just saying for him to go play in some random pickup games and, and stuff like that on, I think it was on blacktop. It was on like, yeah, it was outside. Man, the, yeah, these little hood courts just look super suspect. I was watching Rozier and um, the kid for the most part. They were recently at Dykeman Park out in NYC showing people what's good. Rozier put this nasty double behind the back, crazy maneuver on this person. But these little hood games or these street ball courts just look mad suspect. It's always hella late at night. It looks like there's people way too close to the edges. And I saw that. I went and looked into it. Dude goes up for layup and the guy literally sits there and undercuts his legs. And immediately, you're right, there's a dust up. And he does need those people. Yeah, yeah, it's on purpose. Yeah. And it was just funny, though. It was very telling that Clay was like, all right, then if y'all want to fight, then fight. But if you want to guard him, then guard him or something like that. So it's just kind of mm-hmm. funny. Like, Clay, we don't need to be talking about fighting neither. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't need hands being thrown and broken or nothing. So you're right. And and, and there's footage, too. I'll, I'll try and find it. Last season in China, there was a hilarious video where he goes up to try to do a 360 dunk. He looks like he's had a couple, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. sockies or whatever. <laughs> and he was <laughs> wrong culture, maybe there. But either way. <laughs> He does a three eight. He lands on his butt, and, and it's just Clay being Clay. That's fine. It's all fun and games until it's not. Until until he gets chipped up or something, and that's why I don't. You know, I don't. I don't know. If, I don't think the Warriors have the right to tell him. They can suggest that he chills out, or maybe send someone to kick it with him to make some decisions. And here's the difference too. There's. I know you've seen that footage, that infamous game where KD showed up at the Rucker. This is OKC KD. He showed up and dropped like fifty at the Rucker. And it's a very dope video on, on YouTube. But the difference between when, when these guys go to the Rucker, there's a code there. There's a code where it, it can get rough. They're going to talk hella shit, right? And it can get physical, you know what I'm saying? But there there is unwritten rules that guys aren't going to take you out there. When you're playing now, I don't I don't know different times of night, you know what I'm saying, or when it's – but I'm saying when there's – when like when there's – the dudes are out there and it's Rucker Park and they're playing in their little tournaments – there is somewhat of a code where it is you're you know you're not, you're it's going to be somewhat safe. In China, I don't know, man. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. So, but uh, let's. So another rumor that's hitting the last 24 hour cycle is with this Laker deal. And remember how last episode I talked about the Lakers throwing the complete bag at San Antonio, and it looks like they've done that. They've offered Ingram, Kuzma, Josh Hart and two first round picks you think that's overextending um i mean that's the question people are going to ask i was noticing magic's conversational style he really spits game like really really well if you just hear him talk and how um the cadence of his voice and the register of his voice it seems like he could be like yeah i'm about to steal your car and slap your mom and like people would be okay with it he just has like, hey though yeah "Yeah, it's gonna be cool i'm gonna take your girl she's gonna be with me (laughs) just like (laughs) you know i'm just a bullshit but i'm just saying like what i did notice whenever he was stating all right i've been here for a certain amount of time if i can't get the job done i need to step down from this position so he is pushing really really hard someone gave an example of a poker player like you stated they've pushed all in and now they're just kind of sitting there waiting it out I think he's got that ice in his veins to where it's a it's a baller move it's definitely a boss move I think it's a great idea like you said people get enamored with their young talent when they did play together the Kuzmas the Hearts and everybody they were average correct it's not like they got you right, tons right. and tons but well, they're all like 20 years old too yeah, Kuzma true. Kuzma Kuzma at the NBA Kuzma looking a little oh no man I'm gonna leave that alone but <laughs> but <laughs> but uh 
I just I th- I take the deal if I'm San Antonio. That's because Ingram is going to be a two-way player. And under and what you have to consider is under Pop's tutelage. I know that there's rumors that he's done in 2020. But to take to those two forwards under Pop's tutelage, Josh Hart screams Spurs, right? Fundamental just blue collar, Boring. right? He's he's like he'll be like the next Danny Green. Mm-hmm. You're getting three guys to plug in and two first round picks. I do that. I think it, if that deal goes down, I think we may look back two years from now and and say the Lakers fucked themselves. Hmm. Like I I just because Kawhi, there's a lot, we've talked about this Kawhi. We we don't, we don't know his health. We don't know his health, right? And that. That that's a two first. I just don't know, man. I don't know. I think I think that the ability for San Antonio to to grow and mature those players with that skill set combined with the unknown possibilities of Kawhi and then draft picks that the Spurs always flip. There, even if they're later in the in the first round, when we go back and look at the entire haul of that, if this goes down, if the, if the Lakers don't get a ring. And the window is not as big as we think, right? Kawhi, I know he's like 28, but LeBron's window's not that big. Um, then they're going to they're sacrificing their whole shit for it. Mm-hmm. But I think I think that Magic's way of thinking, the Lakers' way of thinking, is once it, once they're back to like their championship glory contending ways, it'll be easier to attract and make more moves because they've been kind of at the bottom now for like you know four or five years now. Mm-hmm. Definitely, a change does need to be made. It kind of brings me to the concept of in chess, your pawns are worth one point, but your bishops and rooks are worth three points. So when you think about getting rid of pawns, not that I'm calling Kuzma and all them pawns, but since they're not superstars such as a queen or a king, they would have maybe like a three point value. So how many pawns are worth one rook or one knight? or one bishop actually rooks are worth five but i'm just saying like whenever you're playing chess you have to put a numerical value to how much that piece is worth to you and some people are a master of pawns so what you're stating is they're giving up their future for these more dominant pieces but it may be best to keep those pawns because a pawn can always transfer into a queen right they can always advance into something bigger if you develop them and you have eight Pawns. I, I personally like pawns because you can overwhelm people with them. It's almost like a jab. A pawn is a jab. If you just have them and you crowd space, you're going to win. But yeah, I, I'm with you. Um, what is that true ratio or value for each person? I, I would argue. I, so here's the question. They, it, so it, all, by all reports, it's like if they need to get Kawhi to secure LeBron, right? And so that's why they have to do this or why they may be throwing this, uh, what do they call it, godfather offer at the Spurs. <laughs> but um, I would, I'll make the argument, I'll go on record right now, if, and I know this, doesn't, this only works if LeBron, if LeBron is already committed, which I think he, I think LeBron's mind is already made up, maybe not. He's like, hey, KD, man. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll teach you how to brush your hair. Look at my beard. <laughs> I'll teach you how to brush them hairs, baby. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, I think LeBron with Kuzma and Ingram. Yeah, I, I, I just I don't know. Like Kuzma and Ingram, healthy, young, and growing with LeBron in Los Angeles, you can make the argument is better than Kawhi. I, that may sound crazy. I'm just saying we don't know if Kawhi had never been hurt. Maybe I wouldn't be making this argument. But there's that unknown. And then Ingram seems like he's just ready to take another step. Kuzma's just as, is a perfect LeBron counterpart because he's like a more athletic Kevin Love, right? He's just going to bang threes. He, he probably likes to dribble it a little more. But um, so just to give up those, it's like a two for, it's a three for one deal. And I know LeBron wants to win right now, but I just, I don't know, man. I feel like if you can get Paul George for nothing, essentially pay him, and keep some of these young talents, that's more preferable than clearing the whole roster for Kawhi and LeBron. Mm-hmm. Um, let's jump let's jump a little bit of draft. Okay. I have I have a couple of I have a couple of notes down, a couple of clowns about that. DeAndre Ayton. Is it DeAndre Ayton? Is yeah, it? Ayton. Mm-hmm. Ayton. What what's good with his nose, bro? I'm with you. It's kind of like a Saint Bernard. <laughs> You're stupid. That's yeah, no, name. I do. It's kind of <sighs> flat and kind of rounded. Like it's like he has double nostrils. He, I, I, I glanced. I thought he had like you know that brother never needs to breathe out the mouth because he's got like four nostrils, but it's just like a 
you know, he's a. He, I, I liked what he said. I liked when he came up. They brought him up to the press table, and I, he was well spoken. He said all the right things. Oh, he's he Jamaican. He's articulate. Oh yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's very, he has a bunch of different island. He was representing a bunch of different islands and in, in, true and different things. But um, so Aiton, another thing I noticed about what was so the holidays, the third holiday was drafted out of UCLA, and obviously <laughs> they're obviously mama's mama, right? Mm-hmm. But they all look kind of different. <laughs> Like they're all they're all don't get me wrong they're all dark skinned brothers that are gangly right <laughs> but one's six six mm-hmm. one's six three and one's like barely six foot and facially they all look a little different they all <laughs> they all look a little I, I just I, I thought that was interesting uh-huh. um, you're saying you might have seen some different dads in the crowd potentially right right <laughs> they they have a little different athleticism levels little different noses and you know I don't know man I don't know I'll I'll get the I'll get the fo- footage footage up of them I'll get a photo of all three of them <laughs> um, Zaire Smith is like the classic like kind of kind of goofy clumsy nigga that has crazy bounce mm-hmm. he looks just like that like we all know a Zaire Smith is crazy athletic but like socially eh. yeah oh uh, yeah you remember that one homie you used to know the little cat with the glasses i can't say he's crazy athletic but he would surprise you on the court real skinny dude back at vista dang i can't remember his name real nerdy cat dang it'll come to me but oh, yeah, it'll be exactly yeah, what you're yeah, talking yeah. about yeah but yeah i know what you're saying kind of a nerdier dude but you kind of look at his build you're like dang he's kind of cut he's kind of tall he's kind of right <laughs> rip sneaky athlete i don't even know I don't, i'm only saying he's a nerd but he yeah. just he, i just know that cat i seen him and, <laughs> and and i'll go back to the suns i i like the move that the suns made they got the kid from villanova Right. And and they had traded Zaire Smith for him, the kid that he's he's escaping my name. But I think it's it's not it's not Bagley. It's a different. But here was the story with Philadelphia. So the kid from Villanova, he's like ready to go three and D player. He's like a grown man. And Philly drafted him. But his mom works for the Sixers. And so I think part of that was we all know about Colangelo and all that shit. Right. I think the Sixers were like, this is a bad look. Like, even though it really was a perfect fit, I thought they fucked up in this trade. I really did. I know people are high on Zaire Smith, but I thought that that dude fit perfect because the Philly's ready to go now. They need guys that can contribute. He's like a, another Covington, right? And uh, and then they traded him to Phoenix, which was a good move for the Suns. But I think it was an optics thing where they were like, we can't like, there's already too many questions about our front office. We can't draft a kid whose mom works for us. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, that's the Villanova dude. I'll, I'll put up a text of what his name is. It's escaping me. Um, let's talk a little bit about your Dallas Mavericks. Yes, sir. I am very pleased with this. Um, that cat Donkic or Donchich, I apologize. It's just, <laughs> yeah, you feel me? It, it kind of reminds you of Diggler, him and that's Dirk ignorant. and Donkic. It just gives me some allusions to Boogie Nights. I got you to see these fools cleaning up Dallas in the Eastern European area of town. But either way, yeah, I, I hope that um, Dirk shows him the way both on and off of the court because we all know what that's all about. But yeah, Donkic mm. is going to be an excellent um, addition. They were kind of stating that his athleticism is somewhat lacking, kind of weird, but hear me out, that his he's a savant with the ball, but it's not necessarily due to his innate athleticism per se. Not saying he's a scrub or nothing. I'm sure he gets down with the metrics and everything, but he's going to definitely be a very good addition. Pleased that he's headed there. Hopefully um, he's going to be with Dennis Smith. Is that correct as well? Right. Okay, there's right. also going to be that's the, they, they still that's got Barnes, too. Is it true that they're paying Barnes twenty three million dollars? I was looking into that. Something. Oh, crazy. yeah. That's that's why I, I I was on record the summer of KD. I didn't want Barnes back regardless. No, you kept on telling me like, that. Yeah. <laughs> right. I didn't want Barnes. And now the, the Dallas is starting to fill out the roster with more talent. He can slide comfortably back into the background where the Falcon, the Black Falcon, likes to be. Yeah, I'm going to take shots. I'm, I'm going to take shots. Woo! I'm, I'm going to hit him off with all sorts of shit. But, yeah, no, I'm not a big Harrison Barnes fan. Just based off his contract, like, if he, he he's a mid-level player. Mm-hmm. That's really what it is. And, and he, you know, he was – a part of that first championship, but he disappeared when it when it was go time, and he just doesn't have uh, he doesn't have the juice mm-hmm. to me. They also got McDermott but, out there too. I think he's getting three mil per yeah. year. So yeah, they're definitely shifting the money around. They will be good. Um, it's definitely going to be a step up. 
I personally, as an inhabitant of, you know, Arlington, which is near Dallas, can't say that I'm a diehard Mavs fan, but, you know, I support the home team and everything. But that's definitely a step. In the uh, you're going to have when, – when they're in second round of the playoffs in a year or two, you're going to have the Dodgers. <laughs> yeah, hello. <on. laughs> With the perm. Right. No. <laughs> Speaking of Jersey, <laughs> uh, you're funny. My, shout out to Pedro Stoyakovich, my homie Dustin, who now, he gave me an address of where to meet him. And most people give you an address to their home, like Fifth and Rozier or something like that. But this fool, he literally just lives like on the streets, like the corner of Fifth oh, and Rozier. I love the homie, but ultimately, dude from back in the day, he used to always rock this Pedro Stoyakovich jersey. Talk about how he was hitting threes and everything. But he wasn't. The purple. <laughs> The purple Peja Peja was up t- ahead of his time. If prime Peja right now, my God, because he was taller than I think people appreciate. He was like a legit six ten with the the quick flick. Mm-hmm. The Kings team is definitely in the art. Like, those Kings teams are definitely in the argument for. Uh, I saw a question: best team to never win a championship, okay. right? You got to go. And obviously, there's eras before my time, but in my time, the the Jail Blazers, the Kings, <laughs> that Utah team. I don't know. I don't know. I ha- I don't know. I don't know if I can appreciate that as much, but um. Let's talk a little more about this Dallas. The thing for me is, so yeah, Doncic is not a supreme athlete. I talked about him being a little upright. I think he's a little sloppy, like with his, uh, he's not a pro yet in the sense, and that's partly because of the European game. They focus more on skills where, and this goes, this carries through to a lot of sports like MMA and, and different things. They, they're, they're all skill oriented where in this, in America here, we focus on physical training, right? Strength and athleticism and conditioning. And so I would be curious to see what type of athlete he is when he gets like a real trainer and maybe like watches what he eats and stuff like that because you can tell his body's soft. But here's what I think is going to happen, not to to um, shit on your parade, <laughs> but uh, I love the Carlisle Doncic uh, mat, uh, mix. Even though Carlisle is notorious for not working well with rookies, I think that this dude's IQ and his, his feel for the game is going to go – they're going to immediately uh, – they're going to they're going to work well together. And uh, the problem is Dennis Smith Jr. Because Dennis Smith Jr. is a ball dominant kind of chippy dude. Right. And I think that the fact that Carlisle is going to, I think, favor Doncic with the ball in his hands from from the from the jump because he's just the smarter player and he's the better playmaker. I don't know if Dennis Smith Jr. is going to buy into being the Clay Thompson, if you will. Well, one, he doesn't have the skill set. He's not a catch and shoot guy. And that's ultimately what they're going to ask, have to ask him to do. Now, they can be creative and dynamic with it. But, you know, at the end of games, I, I foresee the ball in Doncic's hands. And I don't know if and, – and I don't think it's a problem. You know, Mark, and how they operate. They're Basically, I think Dennis Smith Jr. is going to get out of there eventually. Hmm. They're going to have to move on from him. It's not a perfect pairing. They, I know you can point to the athleticism. Oh, he's a freak athlete, and that'll make up for Doncic. Doncic has the size. He's going to guard the off guard, and Dennis Smith will guard the point. So that works on paper. But I just think that he's going to feel some type of way. I don't know if that's going to work. Mm-hmm. Um, I was hearing some people state that he lacks a wiggle shot. What's a wiggle shot? Who's that, Doncic? Yeah. Uh, I don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, that's, I guess that's someone's own terminology. He, so he's big enough where he's just going to, he has a nice step back. Mm-hmm. He has a nice step back, but he doesn't get low. If you watch most guys that are, that can penetrate and get where they want, like Kyrie's a great example of it because he's not like explosive like Russ, but if you want, he gets super low, right? Guys that, that, that are super shifty get low and he's like very upright in part because of his size. So yeah, he doesn't, he's not going to like, he doesn't change directions or have a, a go-to, I guess the step back is the go-to move, but, um, but it's really transition. They're going to have to play faster. And then apparently they're going to going after Deandre Jordan again. And the Clippers traded Austin rivers. Did yeah. you see that to, to Washington for Marcin Gortat? Mm-hmm. So that just set the table for a Deandre <clears throat> trade, but, I, I what will be hilarious is is John Wall and Austin Rivers are gonna throw mm. hands. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna be like you light skin, ding yeah. ding ding ding. But Austin, the one thing I'll give credit to Austin Rivers really has like no chill. He really like is that guy. Like he's like fuck you, I'm the yeah. best. He really believes yeah. that. I shit. think he'd give Wall a run for his money. All that bark that he puts off sometimes <laughs> gets you into some situations. Right? Austin's the uh, to me he's the perfect example of where he's probably annoying very arrogant but he's but he's rubbed people wrong his whole life 
So I think he's probably tougher than we give him credit. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like people, people have not liked him for a long time, and dudes have tried to go at him for a long time because he's Doc's mm-hmm. boy, and so he's probably developed some toughness. Man. <laughs> yeah, right. If you're always looking over your shoulder or having to like see what's good, you might adopt some different some skills to protect yourself or to shape the environment to your favor, or, or just sneak in and out yeah. the way you need to. But yeah, I an mean, interesting thing. I was watching Dennis Smith and that Michael Porter cat play some one-on-one. What do you think about a drill? And I'll try and get you the footage where it's just basically one-on-one. There's a, a coach on the sideline. He feeds the ball, and it's just basically back and forth, one-on-one. Um, what do you think the value of that is? You know, just having your two best players playing one-on-one to 21. Is there any value in that or not really? Um. At the NBA level, it could be it's one. I it's either some conditioning. Mm-hmm. If they let him go, then they probably you'd take the coach out of it. And you make him go fight for rebounds and stuff like that, loose balls. Um, at the NBA level, I think that they need to have a specific. They need to like uh, compartmentalize it and have a specific thing that they're doing. So, are you catching and reverse pivoting? Are you catching and rip throwing? Two dribbles and you have to shoot right. They have to make it specific so they're working on certain things. Um, otherwise, what, from what I've seen with those drills, it's more of clowning. So it's usually something very specific. Now, like at Amaya's age, you take like the youth age. Like for her, it's very beneficial. And it depends on how what your environment is. She hasn't played a lot of one-on-one. So that's where you kind of develop confidence in your handle and you start to figure out things you can and can't do because you, you're not able to try them in games. So I, I think it's a lot more beneficial for kids at the youth level, right? But at the NBA, you've got to get like specific with it. We're working on you going left every time and this, that, right? You know what I mean? But Michael Porter Jr., I said I said I I wouldn't draft him. The Nuggets got him at 14. He slid. And then it came out like right after that he had the same surgery as Tiger Woods. They drilled a hole in his back and his spine. And I, I shit you not, I'll get the footage. He looked like he had trouble hugging people when he got drafted. <laughs> like his back looked stiff hugging his family. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> Oh, man, and he kind of – and we talk about facial structure and things like that. He looks like yeah. an asshole. Yeah. Put that out there. He has that 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 brow that's like, kind of like – like I'm – but <laughs> – but um, so, yeah, I, I don't blame the Denver for taking him at 14, but I, I my money's not on him succeeding physically. I, I, I'm not questioning his talent. He just – you could see like basically not even on a basketball court in his posture – that he has back problems, and I'm not joking. Yeah, man. Uh, did, so the Chauncey, one, I got a couple just notes on it. Chauncey Billups, I know he's a smart basketball mind, but goddamn, he's dry. He's rough on the. He was rough during the draft. He was rough, and uh, I thought his comparisons were a little over the top. Like everybody's comparison was like Grant Hill mm-hmm. or like Isaiah Tom. It was like whoa, 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 <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I don't know. I guess if they're just being over complimentary you know what i saw too i think for some reason david robinson was there i got i got a theory for y'all david robinson is lebron's dad (laughs) (laughs) and and it goes well beyond the male pattern Uh baldness that they both rock d rob let that shit go it's like five years advance of of lebron's (laughs) but i mean i know he's the admiral and he's he's a consummate pro and all that but he slipped up sometime in Uh the early 80s the admiral was on the road he dropped a seat in akron (laughs) And and there you have it. I mean, look at their physical profile, man. I'll put I'll put That's up a picture. Funny. Those of you that are watching the video of this, man, they look very similar. I did stri- I'm just kidding around, obviously, but I mean, when I saw him, I was like, my God, he looks like LeBron's yeah, it's dad. It's funny, bro. And then you say that when the admiral when he salutes, does he salute like from back here with his hairline? Because our just- <laughs> oh shit, <laughs> it's ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, so he was there, and then. Uh, do I have any any other takes on that? Uh, you know, eight, and I thought they made the right pick. I want to get in a little bit into Warrior Free Agency. Another thing I saw was, I don't know if you caught any of that ESPN, the body thing is starting to leak out mm. every year. And if you're a Carl Anthony Towns supporter, which I am not, you can't be pleased with oh, that. Oh, no, his spread. physique's not on point like everybody else's? You can't. No, no, it's not that it's not on point. It's just some uh, of the poses. <laughs> Suggest like, Got like, like, like the you know I I hit I've, I've overused that one, but some of the pilots just like mm, I don't want my seven footer who's supposed to you know we we're we're questioning his toughness, 
and you know his 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 fight on the court. I don't need him posing like that. You, I, Tibbs probably threw up in the back of his <laughs> mouth when he saw it. I'll I'll put it to you like that. So I thought that was funny. Um, getting into free agency. What? Oh yeah, that's what I wanted to ask you about. I wanted your your uh professional evaluation. So Dwight Howard was traded again, right? I, I don't think I've ever seen a player of his caliber traded this much that quickly. Um. To the Nets, and the Nets waived him, so he's a free agent. And there's rumblings that Golden State is looking at him. Remember, they they courted him years and years ago in the beginning of the Lake of Era. Um, what is like Dwight Howard is clearly that guy. Like people don't yes. fuck with him. They, that's what happened in Charlotte. That was the report out of Charlotte. Just like every other locker room, guys were tired of Dwight yes, sir. Howard. And he was actually asked very candidly by Charles Barkley. So if he were to sit down in a session. Charles asked him outright, why don't people like you? But I can say that whenever he answered that question, he did a pretty good job. That's a tough question to answer. But what he stated when he was asked the question, Dwight, why don't people like you? He stated, people think I'm selfish or I'm disengaged. Um, They think that I'm all about me, that I'm some type of prima donna. He also smiles a lot, which is kind of crazy. And there's some information about people who smile a lot. It can sometimes be inauthentic. So he is somewhat of a clown, but his jokes are corny. Like a Nick Young, his jokes are kind of funny. So we'll let him be a clown. But Dwight's jokes are kind of like some want to hear a dirty joke. You know, a cow fell into the <laughs> a pond. You know what I'm saying? Like he just has those old, that corny ass style. Like he's not actually engaging mm-hmm. himself. He rubs people the wrong way. If you go through it, um, he was compared to Andrew Bynum for a while. And Shaq was saying Bynum was much better than him because he has different maneuvers he can do down low. He has all the physical capabilities. Skip Bayless got at him and said, even though you're built like Tarzan, you play more like Jane. Like, that's kind of (laughs) aggressive. Durant flat out called him a bitch. Um, People say that whenever he sets screens, they're actually weak. And setting screens, to me, is almost like being a fullback. There's no fullbacks in football any longer. But if you're a fullback and you don't get that edge and someone doesn't get a touchdown because you were too lazy to block, people are going to be mad at you because you're a whack ass. I would think that it's the same thing. If you're a dude who's hella big and can set pretty solid screens, yet your screens are super weak or you're not setting that second screen just to help out, people get tired of that too. So I guess there'd be plays that would be called and Dwight wouldn't even run them. He would be in the wrong place. And then whenever people be like, man, where the fuck were you? You're supposed to be at the elbow. He would make it someone else's fault. So when we look at some of the context Mm. in the history, when he responded to why people don't like him, they think he's selfish. But from a basketball standpoint, he sets weak screens. He's not always willing to accept responsibility for his shortcomings. And um, his jokes just aren't funny. Like, you can't be a funny man if you generally yourself are not that entertaining. It's just annoying. I think he's probably that kid who he's just more annoying to people. They don't like him. He's going to be the dude where you're watching the thing in class and he's going to crack the dumbass joke that nobody laughs at, but still keep it going. You know what I'm saying? Like, I just think he's annoying. Right. Right. Yeah. No. Yeah. He lacks maybe some Mm -hmm. self-awareness. He keeps on hammering the same joke. I think also uh, that there's there's a sense I know for myself like when I'm watching it like a, a a team I'm a fan it could be football basketball whatever it is you want to know that they care right and and, they, and and you talk about him not being congruent like some of his his uh body language with what he's saying and all that stuff and he just never seems to care that much like you see like when they get eliminated or whenever whenever they take an L I think it rubs guys the wrong way that he's still making and maybe that's his way of diffusing the situation or handling with right but he's cracking jokes and smiling after you just get you get dumped that doesn't that that wears thin no you're right and even to give it more context so that's the context but from a sheer um psychological standpoint there's a person named super and he came up with this five-stage model of how career development works and if you look at mellow and you also look at dwight through the tasks that you're supposed to overcome during these stages they have not maneuvered these specific tasks very well so for example Whenever you get into the growth stage, your task is to develop what type of a person you want to be and understand the meaning of work. So I think most basketball players during their AAU years and even your daughter, she's in that growth phase where she finds out what can I do, how can I match it up with my long-term goals. Dwight did that relatively well, but he made some mistakes during the exploration stage. Um, He was given a lot of accolades, you know, dunk this, that, and the other, all-stars, and um, making a big impact on a team. But I don't think that he did that much to learn more about opportunities. That's one of the tasks that we have to overcome during the exploration stage, which is the second stage of Super's model. 
And then the establishment point is tough because you're now fighting against the younger workforce. And I think that he's just kind of, I can't say his skills have tapped out, but he's definitely in the position to where he's fighting against a younger workforce. And if he's not willing to accept his role, they're going to have to move on from you. I think athletes tend to forget that yes, you're big, yes, you're strong, yes, you're smart, but everyone has a shelf life. <clears throat> So I think that he has made some mistakes in consolidating his chosen occupation and also becoming stable. He has had a lot of instability. So due to that lack of instability or lack of stability, he's missing out on the maintenance stage. And once we go through this with Mello, it'll make a little bit more sense. But there's these five different stages you go through. And I think that he made some mistakes with his exploration and his function of stability from a, from a sheer career standpoint. And lack of using huh? condoms. <laughs> <laughs> Lack of using condoms, right? How many baby mamas that nigga got? No wonder he's demanding max deals when there's no centers in the league. But, but, but yeah, no, the game, without, without a doubt, the way the game's being played just in general, even if he was in his prime, he wouldn't be as valuable, right? Because it's just the centers. But, yeah, I've, I've never been a big fan of his. And I guess to wrap up with him and, and the Warriors rumors, how I feel about it, I think it's a bad omen. I'm not fucking with Dwight. And I hope the Warriors aren't um, – I'm, I'm, I'm talking a minimum contract. I'm not fucking with Dwight because it, it's – the locker room, it's a lot it, It's a lot different than an NFL locker room where – what is there, 53 guys, right? And there's all these different cliques. It's much more close-knit. One bad seed, one bad clown mm -hmm. can ruin it all. And especially with the, the, the rumors that were swirling after the finals of how difficult it was in this locker room last season – I just don't risk bringing him in. I think it's a bad omen. I don't care if he plays for free. Um, now, <laughs> I'm serious, man. And uh, and and uh, now let's jump into Mello. Now, Mello, he and I point I pointed this out to you about his social media. It's been covered a little bit, right? He, uh, what's the word? He opted into his his year his final year in Oklahoma City, twenty seven million dollars, something crazy like that. Everybody knew he was because he wasn't going to get that on the open market. And now he's been on social media with cigars and wine and all these uh, these little phrases and cryptic tweets or not tweets but Instagram posts where I've been seeing it. And it really struck me as someone who was really going through a midlife crisis. It was, it's kind of embarrassing. And, I, and, I, and, 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 let me, and let me say, like, it's different. If you're Kyle Kuzma or you're Jason Tatum or you're Donovan Mitchell, right, and you're all over Instagram in the summer, I'm cool with it. I get it. You're 22. You're 20, 25 years old, whatever it is. And, you know, it's the summer and you're putting in work. But when you're mellow, stop it, dude. It's embarrassing, dog. To me, it's embarrassing. Um, but you want You were relating that back to him and Dwight share some of the same. Yeah, man. According to that model, like if you look at it, Mello's issue is the fact that he is not willing. The establishment phase, like we were talking about, which is that third one, he made some challenges in wasting some of his more productive years. Even whenever he was on the Knicks, that whole concept of just jacking up shots in kind of stunted his ability to work on other aspects of his craft. But the thing I can say about Mello is he is a master of commissioning a deal to where he's going to get paid for a long-ass time. Because even if they try and move on from him, if OKC had to, they were going to have to separate his contract into a three-year buy-down type situation. So if nothing else, he's got some people around him to where he goes for that money. And I, I think that a lot of people work for money, but he's not like Durant to where he's doing it for personal enjoyment per se. I think he kind of sold out for the cheese and some of his craft was hindered as a, as a result of that. Sometimes people like the outcomes of what they get more than their actual profession. Some people are just a physician because then they get a hot wife and a Ferrari, but they go to work every day not caring about people and actually hating medicine. I think that Carmelo in some ways loved his time in NY, big stage, he was the man, everybody was all over him, but that stunted his ability to actually work on his skills, man. I mean, he's kind of soft. I, and he's also probably cheesing and hella happy because yeah, physically. Um, somebody might be dipping out. So that spot that he um, <laughs> wasn't going to get might be more open. More so shots, this nigga was probably more the back for like, him. Yeah, Paul, you know, I'll miss you, but at least now I get to get closer to the court. <laughs> Yeah, he, I just, it, the posts were, it was embarrassing to me. They were embarrassing to me. He was just trying too hard. It'd be, it'd be mm -hmm. one thing if it was one or two. Well, what was he was saying? Like, what was he saying? Sudden, this barrage. 
Um, just pictures of him with like a cigar or a, or a wine glass. I'll put some up on the video thing of it. And I can't quote him, but just things, sayings that no way he came up with that mm -hmm. he's like quoting that's made, supposed to make him ah, seem sophisticated nah. and, 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 ah, and hell deep. Nah, nah, and nah, it's nah. like, come on, man, stop it. <laughs> yeah, it was bullshit. It was bullshit. And I think I think part of the reason Melo gets gets maybe more flack than some other superstar players is. And this, this, he falls into the category of athlete where in the NBA, where we know based on his athleticism and not now, I'm the, the ship has sailed, but in his prime, we know he could have played defense, right? And so, like, you like, there's certain guys where it's 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 limiting, right? You're like, well, he's never going to be a great defender, like Melo. If he, no one's ever accused him of being, uh, of, of you know, mm -hmm. being overworking himself, right? He ain't locking himself in a gym, you know what I'm saying? And and so, like, if he were to really get in shape and he focused on it and he was on a good team, he absolutely mm -hmm. could have been a plus defender. And so that's why I think he gets more flack than some of these other guys, where it's like, all right, even let's just take a Kyrie or a Steph. Just the, their size and, and, and physical strength, there's going to be limitations, right? But Melo is 6'8", 235, 240, right? A bit soft, but if he could have been a good defender. And so he's going to catch flack for that. And mm -hmm. then, of course, chasing mm -hmm. the money. Um, but I, I wanted – so the, the free agency is going to hit here, I think, Monday. We're going to have to hit – I don't know when we'll hit an episode next week. It's going to be popping, man. It's going to be popping. The, the offseason is really going to start next season with LeBron, and then the chips will fall. Um, there's rumors that Golden State's talking to Jamal Crawford, former Warrior, and it makes sense. He's a, a you know a, a confident gunner. He has relationships with players on the team. I'm not really with it. He'll be 39 <laughs> by the end of the next season, and Father Time is undefeated. I know that he he has such a youthful energy and a, and a unique game, but I'm I, I don't I'm not really with it. I guess maybe if he's just coming on a minimum, and so that really just costs us a roster spot. But I don't, I wouldn't pay him anything more than the minimum. Um, I know that they asked, they they inquired about Dwayne Wade last year, and that seems weird. I don't know if he's ready to hang it up, but I thought it would be an interesting. What if what D Wade low key wanted to stick it to LeBron? Because LeBron's dipped on him twice. Essentially, <clears throat> he dipped on him in Miami and didn't tell him. And then at the midpoint this season, right, he was like, you know, LeBron pulled the trigger on sending <laughs> Wade out of there. Come on. Like, I don't care what you say. So he's kind of, I don't know if there's any animosity. So if Wade's like, oh, okay, word, bet. We, you know, okay. <laughs> Get some more <laughs> Because Wade, right? Right? That would, I mean, that would be a real, like, that would be some funny shit. And I think in that, in that capacity, Wade is very effective. He's one of the smarter players we've ever seen. And you saw him be effective with Miami last year. Like, if he's playing like 12, 15 minutes where he can preserve himself, he mm -hmm. can still be very mm -hmm. effective, man. So I throw that name out there. Um, there's Avery ba Bradley, Contavious Caldwell Pope. I got that out, I think, right? Those would be like mid-level. You'd have to spend the mid-level. And the thing with the Warriors is being over the luxury tax, it costs them like three times what it actually does because they're getting taxed, um, if that makes any sense. So I don't know about them going out and getting that. Out of those guys, Avery Bradley's just always banged up. So I I'd stay away from Avery Bradley despite liking him. I like Contavious uh, KCP, I'm just going to say, I like him as a three and D guy, but here's what I'm looking for. And, and, and Jacob Evans, the, the first pick, the, the first round pick for the Warriors out of Cincinnati. Those of you that are wondering where I'm going to cover, if you, you go check out my Patreon, I'm going to cover all Warriors summer league games. And I'm going to have like real exclusive breakdowns on what I think of this rookie and the young players, the Warriors summer league games. That's on my Patreon. So check that out. I'll have a link for that. But uh, what the Warriors need to do to fight this complacency and the fatigue of this roster being together is, I think it's imperative that it, it, it's not necessarily the skill set. We know the, the mold of player they look for. We want dudes that are kind of nasty and very competitive. And that leads me to Lance Stevenson. Yeah, whoa. Steven, <clears throat> right? In Indiana, I guess it was kind of a surprise. They let him walk. <laughs> So he's a free agent. And you say, well, alchemy, man, you say you don't want Dwight. Why would you want Lance? One, because Lance fits today's NBA much better, right? And I just, I think we need a few guys off the bench that are chippy, 
That's what I'm looking for. Competitiveness. That's why I was uh, endorsing Grace and Allen, right? Lance, obviously they're completely different, but they're not. When they get on the court, they really mm -hmm. kind of play the same chippiness. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? With the same chippiness. So Lance Stevenson, and then a name that I'll throw out there, shout out Warriors World. I saw this one on there, is Mario Hanzoni. Hanzoni. Hanzonia. Hanzonia. There it is. I, I know who he is. I just can't pronounce his name. Y'all know that. The kid for Orlando. He was like a top five pick, six pick, except five a few years ago. He never panned out. Um, very athletic, European. He's a two guard, but and he so it hasn't worked out. It, it'd be a it would be a uh, a buy low, you know, on a high ceiling guy who still has a chance. But what I like about him and what I remember from him is he's kind of nasty. He kind of has an attitude, and you're always running the risk of it disrupting the locker room. Right, but the, I think there's a better chance with the younger guys they fall in line. Dwight is is who he is, and so uh, his Hedzonia or Lance Stevenson, I think, are guys that I would like to see them take a look at because of the competitive juice. On you know what I'm saying on a, on a night in on a night in December where our guys just have no interest in playing. That's mm -hmm. where we need those dudes, mm -hmm. man. Um, another name I'll throw out that I do like is Rudy Gay. And now he doesn't bring that juice that I'm looking for. But as far as a skill set and falling in line, um, I might be willing to give him the mid-level. Just He looked really good in San Antonio coming off the Achilles. And you talk about, I mean, because he can, you can swing and fit him in anywhere. He can, he can fit into, he can play Durant's role. He could play Draymond's role. He can play Clay's role. He's just interchangeable. That would be the appeal of a Rudy Gay. Um, and that's my little free agency spat. But again, if you want my summer league coverage, check it out on, on Patreon. I got that coming next week. They play like Monday. <clears throat> yeah, man, I'm looking forward to you getting out there. Like we were talking about maybe two or three sessions ago. Uh, yeah, man, it'd be great if you could get out there, interview some people, watch some of the games, yeah. hit the streets of, uh, Vegas. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I do. I do need to get up there, man. But it's, I don't know. You know me. I, I have a hard time even getting out the damn house. Ain't oh, yeah. And shout out weeks. everyone on who's watching. I was able to see the homie during the middle of the day. Neither he or I were at work. <laughs> I saw him with his wonderful daughters kicking it at a local spot of the community. It was great. <laughs> um, <laughs> in our whole time knowing one another, which is, what, four, five, six years, whatever it might be. I think I've seen you drive like three times <laughs> like because maybe maybe <laughs> maybe because we never left at the same time because our schedules were right, different right. but right. like I've, I've never ridden in the car with you uh, <laughs> oh just... i could drive i could drive oh no I'm hell no you. i'm not saying that you i know you could drive <laughs> i'm just saying you and i have only driven a place right three we, four we, times we hit up, uh, we've hit up uh uh what's the golf the drive <laughs> top range. golf where else have we top ever golf. gone to no, you're right. We did a bar or two, a couple. We saw McGregor win a championship true, a couple true, times. True. But you're right, man. Y'all, I don't, I don't get out. I stay in the lab. I got to do better at that, man. But it's this heat. Oh, it was so just, hot yesterday. How'd y'all make it? Man, we were out there until this. You know, we were out there for. So we went to a, a a water park. There's a lot of water slide parks out here in the desert. We were out there from like five to nine. You know what I mean? I just tried to stay in the shade. I put a towel on my head and just chilled out. <laughs> but um. But yeah, man, I know, I know, I got to get out better. That's why it's a fat chance I get out to Vegas. But I'm trying to, <laughs> my kids, my kids, you know, I'm doing the movie passes and the water passes. But the desert's crazy. But uh, what else? There was one. There was one other thing. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we wrap it up, so I don't know if you got a chance to see it, but the internet was going crazy. That little Bronny, Bronny LeBron Jr. tried to tried to hammer on somebody. Did you see any of that? No, but I did see his pops. I, I saw that little championship game or whatever in Miami. It was June twenty second or something. A couple weeks back but now he, he didn't he didn't make it so he goes up and yeah he, he it wasn't even close it wasn't even close but i mean he got up he got up the ball up up to the rim right and uh and but the the whole point of it was that he tried it right in a game he went up and tried to spike it like his dad and his dad and it was it was a great little video clip of lebron being excited about it and it got me to thinking uh that it, it's we talk about genetics and genes and kids and when they become aware of there's there's limitations and there's expectations <laughs> and you know like if you're a kid like i there's kids i coach in these junior sons league and stuff like that where they're really good right now and they're advanced and there's there's some really good kids but ultimately i think whether they're conscious of it or not they can look at their parents and they kind of know there's going to be limitations you know what i'm saying like well if if my dad is five nine and my mom is five five and they both work in cubicles, mm -hmm. and I'm not even telling. But I'm just saying, mm -hmm. right? You know, I mean, mm -hmm. that at some point, you're 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 going to have some limitations, no matter how good your skills are. Because when when you're when you're like 
8 to 12 years old, there's not this huge gap yet in athleticism. Sometimes you see it, right? But then as you get to high school, you're like, oh, right? Mm-hmm. And and I just think it's funny because the whole the whole brawny dunk, the only because he wasn't even close. The only reason that he had that he had within him to try it is because un- subconsciously he knows who his dad is. Yeah, he's seen Pops do it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he knows that eventually he's going to do it. Might as well try it now, yeah. <laughs> right? Where a normal kid is like, they're probably not trying that because they're not even close. He probably needs another six inches, mm-hmm. right? Pause. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but but he knows subconsciously like, yo, I'm Le- LeBron is my fucking dad. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm going up and I'm going to try to hammer Hell that shit. Yeah. And so I thought that was kind of telling psychologically, like <laughs> he knows what, what, what is written. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Back to the NBA awards. Man, how come this fool was wearing like a cow printed? His gear was so horrible. And his mom seems like a very nice lady. Hey, sup? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it, but it, it, that was that was Dre, right? It's funny because you see those commercials mm. with Dre and his mom. And then I saw the picture mm-hmm. with Harden and his mom and everything. And it just seems like. I don't know. I just think Harden's room as a kid was probably very stinky, (laughs) smelling kind of like a gym or something like that, that he would always like skip baths or whatever. But either way, just whatever he was wearing was looking crazy. It was hella like wide this way. And it was like, was he one of those cows from the Chick-fil-A thing or something? It was just crazy. Yeah, the style, I don't don't know. I think it's one of those things where you get really, when you get to a certain level of, uh, you know, brackets, your money bracket, right? It, it's not enough to just be like in the sleek GQ. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, mob, I always contend that, you know, if I get to that that financial bracket, I'm going to be like mobster looking. I'm going to have like the tailored, real clean, slick, like murked out mm-hmm. stuff. But these dudes is loud with it. But we've talked we talked about the hypotheticals of his, his beard, I suspect, smells like, have you ever spilt something in a movie theater? <laughs> like where there's carpeting? <laughs> You know, like carpeting in a dark area that doesn't see light type of thing. <laughs> but I thought he really missed an opportunity to to humanize himself because he's so stoic and he's not very well liked. Let's keep it real. Um, and it's partly because of his person, a lot because of his personality. And he kept the shades on and he really fought the emotion. You could tell that he was emotional. Right. And I thought he had missed a real opportunity to take his sunglasses off. And kind of show people that, you know, he's got feelings, too, and he's a real dude. And he kind of blew that. Mm-hmm. But uh, the overall, the NBA awards were very underwhelming. They were very, I thought Drake did a better job. I, there was no real roasting. Mm-hmm. Um, Drake did a better one last season. And I think they're going to have, I like the concept of it, but I think they're going to have to make some changes. Yeah, it was, and, it was definitely a little things. dry. And Dwayne Casey's speech was kind of interesting, too, whenever he's talking about how he had recently gotten fired. That's always a a funny one to throw out there because I guess you do it for yourself. I like that he shouted out all the people that helped him get to where he was. I think that was a very good way to go about it. But it's also kind of tongue in cheek. You know, I wonder if he was kind of jap at the people who just recently fired him. Like, I think I might have a little bit of a tinge of of hate if I had an opportunity to shout out those fools that let me go the same year I won coach of the year. But Either way, that wasn't something I found somewhat interesting. And your boy Nick Young, too, talking about people's noses with DeAndre Ayton. Did you hear Nick Young was saying that they should um, oh, legalize coke or whatever sugar. or something? Yeah, that's a sure that's a sure way to not get a a, a roster spot next. <laughs> yeah, season they need the to chance. test this. I, is he getting down? I mean, man, man, it is what it is. We 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 <laughs> we got by. We won a ring with him, and that's that. But yeah, we're moving on. So that's where it'll be interting to see. How they fill out this roster? Summer league is going to be dope because we, we have, I believe, Damian Jones, Jordan Bell, uh, Jake, uh, Jacob Evans, the rookie. I think McCaw's going to play. We have like a veteran team for summer league, so it should be. And then there's a tournament. They're going to play like six or seven games. But um, but yeah, Swaggy. I don't know who's going to pick him up after that. I don't. I, I mean. Yeah, someone. Someone. He's going to get a minimum deal, but I don't think he cares. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what the deal is with that. Um. But yeah, man, I think this was a good one. We're gonna have to jump back in probably midweek next week after free agency hits, and there'll be there's gonna be a lot to talk about. All this hypothetical shit is gonna turn into reality, mm-hmm. and we can actually really kind of evaluate some of these moves. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm definitely with you, and it's exciting too because whatever they have to say, the NBA as a brand, 
is really kicking butt because right now it's NFL, right? Back in the past, all the conversation was NFL, this, that, and the other. And granted, it's out there, but the NBA has done a wonderful job. (laughs) You ever saw Who Framed Roger Rabbit or whatever? Doesn't Adam Silver look like the bad guy from um, the guy with the little squeaky glasses and the weird head? (laughs) But but, but that transition from the old dude to him, he's done a great job, I, I would say, in relationship to keeping the NBA relevant, the drama. And the ex because the finals just ended. Most people, me as a casual fan, you know I love hoops, <clears throat> but not like you or nothing. But even I'm entertained with the draft. Back in the day, the draft wasn't of interest to, to me. You know, no, they've successfully made it a 12 month sport, right? It, the coverage is not, and it's great for someone like me and, and, and that can cover it all all the way around. And Adam Silver does kind of look like the evil dude in the chair that spins around <laughs> in in a move, right? Yeah. He, he definitely knows. <laughs> He, he may be friendlier than Stern, but he knows where the bodies are buried as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, yeah, man, we'll uh, we'll hop back on. I hope y'all enjoyed. <clears throat> we was in episode 18, 19. I don't know. Y'all tell us, but uh, we're out. Let's get it.